So as you guys have seen, I have been doing a whole bunch of vlogging recently. And for those of you who don't know, I'm the sort of person that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it well. So I'm not going to be walking around with a front-facing camera on like an iPhone 5S doing my vlogs. No, I wanted to go out to get myself some proper equipment. I've been doing a ton of research and also a bunch of purchasing. And I would say I now have myself a pretty good setup. started with arguably the most important piece of equipment which is the camera. Now this is my original vlogging camera, the Canon 600D. It filmed in full HD, it's got an APS-C crop sensor so it crops by about 1.6 and it also had this very handy fold out screen so you could see exactly what you were vlogging. It worked well, I shot some pretty awesome videos on this but I thought I was doing an upgrade so I got myself an A7R2 which is what I'm filming on right now. Now there are a bunch of reasons as to why I picked the Sony a7R2 as my vlogging camera. Number one is that it films in 4K, which is the highest resolution that YouTube can handle. Number two is that it's a full frame camera, which is pretty good because it means you can get slightly longer focal length lenses, which generally have larger apertures, which means that you can get this lovely depth of field effect going on. Whereas if you're using something like a crop sensor camera, like this thing right here, you have to have slightly shorter focal lengths to be able to do the handheld stuff, and generally short focal length lenses don't have large apertures, which isn't particularly brilliant. But also, this thing has got in-body stabilization, which is like optical image stabilization inbuilt in the camera, so we don't get shaky footage, which is nice. Uh, it's small and compact, and also it has very fast autofocus, which is brilliant because I can't see the screen, so it's nice to know that nine times out of 10, I'm fully in focus. So basically, this thing is a beast. Only negative is, is that it's really, really, really expensive. Now I'm sure there's some people that would argue that this point here is actually the most important part, which is the lens. What lens are you going to use? Now I have two lenses at this point in time, and this one right here is the one that I use for all of my handheld stuff, which is the Zispatis 18mm f2.8 lens. So that's a really short focal length, but a relatively large aperture. It's like a, a middle of the way aperture, which means that you get a tiny bit of depth of field blurring action going on, but not too much, so you can still see what's going on behind me. Now this thing is fantastic. I absolutely love it. It's ridiculously fast autofocus. It's got a nice width to it, and obviously because it's a Z lens, it's got beautiful colors as well. So this right here is what my average vlogging clip will look like. Completely handheld right now, the camera is mounted on top of the gimbal. As you can see, we've got a lovely wide field of view. Tiny bit of blurring in the background, but nothing too ridiculous. You can see exactly what's going on. I love this thing. It is the ultimate setup for handheld vlogs. But if you want to do mounted vlogs or B-roll, this is going to be the new monster for me. I, I've been using it for the start of the video. It's the Zeiss 35mm f1.4 lens. And I just think that the shots from this thing look absolutely stunning. Now I'd say there's two negatives that apply to both of these lenses. Number one is that they're both pretty big. I mean, this is an 18mm prime. It's pretty huge, but the 35mm prime right there, that is massive for just a prime lens. That is the biggest prime lens I've ever owned. And also, Really expensive. I mean, the pair of them, they're absolutely extortionate, but you pay for the quality, I'd say. So we've spoken a bunch about the video quality. Now it's time to talk about the audio quality. And to be honest with you, my audio quality is rubbish. I'm using a Rode Go microphone, which is the cheapest top-mounted microphone I could find on the internet. And it's, it's, it's terrible, to be honest. So let's... <laughs> Let's quickly move on from that one. So I'm sure all of you have seen one of these before. This is a Gorillapod. I've actually just broken this one live on camera right there. But the good old fashioned Casey Neistat style, holding the camera underneath like this and talking to it. You know, that, that was pretty cool. That worked fairly nicely, but now we're in the future. And we use things like these. Now this is the Beholder DS1 Gimbal. I've actually done a whole video on this thing before. I would say this is one of the coolest tools for filmmakers out there. I mean, it is fantastic. and allows you to get wonderfully smooth shots so very easily. If 
If there's any sort of downside to having something like this, is the fact that it's massive. I mean, this is a huge thing to have to carry around with you. But also, it's a bit of a pain in the backside to set up on the fly, because you have to balance it, and if you're changing lenses, you have to rebalance the whole camera. But most importantly, as per most things in this video, it's expensive. This is like a £600 piece of kit right here, so yeah, a lot of money in what is essentially a camera mount. But outside of this sort of thing, I mean obviously I've got like ND filters that I use for filming outside. I've got this thing right here, which is my Phantom 3 drone, which is just a little bit broken at this point in time. My Mavic Pro is apparently on the way, but haven't seen any signs of that one just yet. So that is essentially my ultimate vlogging setup at this point in time. I'd say it looks pretty good, but let me know down in the comment section any suggestions that you have for improving it and making it better because I'm always up for that sort of thing. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you in the next one.